Right guys, welcome back to today's episode. Changed the drum brakes out for disc brakes on the rear. Got the new front runners on the car. Got the new tyres on the front of the car. Got all the suspension installed. By the end of this video, you're going to see us lower this car down and push it outside for the first time so we can check stance and um, how everything fits and clears. So uh, stay tuned, enjoy the vid, and uh, please like, share, and subscribe. So what we did here, we were hoping to run, we had some you know, nine inch drum brakes that I had on the car before and they were all reconditioned, they are all brand new. But because the, the, the rear axle is so short, we haven't bought the rear, we've got away without modifying the rear chassis rails. So as you can imagine, the tubes are so short, by the time the drum brakes go on, the drum brakes actually sit right under the centre of the chassis rail with only about three or four inches of clearance. So too close for my liking. We're not sure how hard this thing is going to squat. So the last thing I want to do is get this thing built up, get out there and have this thing launch and start rubbing on the chassis rail. So I phoned a mate of mine, Mark, uh, Mark Tony. Um, he builds lots of rear ends and he had three different disc brake kits for it. So we were hoping that the offset on these discs would bring the brakes out past the chassis rail, which is exactly what happened. So they're just a GM disc and caliper. Not sure exactly what they're off. I I just ridge all the stud pattern because we've got big strange axles. The center's quite large, so I've machined the centers of these out to, to slide over the axle. Just a speedway caliper. It sits outside the rail now, which is absolutely fantastic. And obviously being a caliper and a you know a wheel and a bracket on, we can put that wherever we like. So it is tight, the bracket's tight. <clears throat> it literally sits between the spring perch and the U-bolt, but it doesn't foul on anything and you can still get everything in and out with ease. So relatively cheap. Yeah, a little bit of weight in the calipers, but I'm, I'm not I'm not worried about it. So I've also picked up a new pedal um, from Wheelwood and a cylinder, really cheap stuff. I think this was like 160 US dollars. No booster, but I think they call it a six inch from the leverage or the fulcrum point. So you don't need a booster because you've got so much leverage on this pedal. So cheap as shit. All we're gonna do is make a bracket up on the bottom of the pedal and we're gonna hang that underneath on the bottom of the roll cage. Nice, cheap, easy fix. Once we get the cage installed, which we're kind of hoping to have that installed by now, but Wayne's flat out, so another two weeks and it's in for the cage. So we're gonna mount that at the same time. Once we get that back, we can start plumbing up all the brake lines um, and suspension, steering, brakes is, is all done. Moving along pretty nicely. Obviously got all the wheels on the car now. Got the new slicks or the new bias pliers for the front. Um, suspension's in. We moved the axle back about an inch because it wasn't directly centre on the wheel opening. So those falling bars, all those calibers track bars on today because we moved it back an inch. By the time you wind these out, I wasn't happy with the amount of material that was inside those tubes. So I bought four new ones. Four new threaded bosses, left and right hand thread. I've got some heavy wall tube coming, so I thought instead of cutting these up and lengthening them, I'll save these for another project and just make another set of bars. So that should be a you know a simple, simple exercise, get them painted, put them back on the car. And then apart from that, the car's sitting and it's ready to go. Um, got the fuel system all happening now. So got the reg, got the pump, got all the fittings. These things cost an absolute fortune because they're so big, but we need it, unfortunately. Got some nice braided hose for the car. As we said earlier, it's dash 12 from the tank to the pump, dash 10 out of the pump up to the reg, and then we're gonna run dash eight out of the regulator to the carbs. Carbs are on their way. We should have those in a couple of weeks. Well, we pretty much bought all the bits now. We don't have to buy anything else. We've got a few little things like engine blanket or diaper. Car's wired. Still got to get a set of bars, wheelie bars and a parachute. Like I said, waiting on the cage. Then we can mount the seats 
and finish off the interior, get some trims and whatnot made. But we're, we're pretty much ahead of schedule, I think. It's just killing me financially, it really, really is. It's getting expensive now. This one under here. That's nice. Makes life easy. We are in a little bit of a dilemma. I've had a bit of a think about this. We're putting an 850 cage in this car and I don't know if that's the right thing to do. We've worked it out and just on a thousand horse with the gearing tire size, if this thing hooks with a thousand horse, it's smack bang on 850 at 160 mile an hour. And obviously we've got a lot more than that. I think I've kind of probably answered my question already, but I think we should be shooting for a 750 cage because there's no point having all that power if we're gonna get kicked off the track because we're running too fast. So not sure if Wayne's got the time to do that yet. We're just gonna see. Uh, I'm gonna sleep on it for a couple of days, have a chat with Wayne, see what he says. Bananas under there, to be quite honest. <clears throat> Gonna underseal the body of the car, obviously. That can be one of the last things we've done once we've finished modifying and welding and whatnot. guys we'll hope you enjoyed the video next up is obviously roll cage and wheelie bars we're just waiting for our booked in slot so hope you enjoyed the video please like share and subscribe and we'll catch you on the next one